Today we'll be looking at two different types of cursors. The first is the traditional pointer cursor like the one you see on the screen right now. The pointer cursor has a single point of activation, which means that if you want to click on a certain element or widget on the screen, you have to directly hover over that element and then select it. The pointer cursor is harder to navigate in modern user interfaces because there are many, many widgets in any given screen. For instance, on this typical screen, there are application-specific options on this menu bar at the top and a row of other applications that you can select to at the bottom. And not to mention the uh, application interface of the Sublime Text Editor here that covers the entire screen here. The bubble cursor is an interesting idea from Microsoft Research back in 2005. It's the idea that the cursor should dynamically expand to encapsulate the closest widget or button so that the user doesn't have to directly hover over that element. And by dynamically resizing the cursor, we can account for the problem when two widgets are simultaneously enca encapsulated within the same uh, boundary of the cursor as shown here. Okay, so today we're going to take part in an experiment that evaluates the performance of these two point, these two cursors, the point cursor and the bubble cursor, and see which one is better. First, we'll go through the tutorial trials, and let's click select the experiment. So here is the bubble cursor, which dynamically rescales based on the distance to this point here in the center. Reading the instructions at the top, we see there are four blocks for each type. Each block is 27 trials, each trial is 9 selections, and a break will be held every 2 blocks. So let's click on the red target first, and then just walk through the tutorial trials. And then now here's the actual trial, and now the data will be collected. And if I click on an incorrect one, incorrect gray circle, that will actually be recorded as an error. And we can see that here, as shown with two errors, which is when I clicked twice on the gray circles. And this is sort of the example data that we can get. First, we know the block number, the cursor type, uh, the trial number, the selection number. A is the distance between the starting position and the target bubble. W is the width of the circle. R is the effective width. Uh, D is the density, time is in milliseconds, and we also have the number of errors at the end. So that's sort of the bubble cursor. And let's try again, and now we have the pointer cursor. As you can see here, there is no uh, dynamically rescaled circle that pops up. Here we just have to click on the element itself, and let's go through the tutorial trials again. Cool. So now let's go through a field trial. And see the data here again. So this data corresponds to the pointer, data, pointer cursor. And that's it. Thanks for watching.